Amen. God, we're grateful again for all that you're doing. It is your breath in our lungs. Mm. For in creation, you breathed into Adam the breath of life. And every baby that comes through the womb, Lord, you breathe. Thank you for your breath upon our sky. Thank you for the breath of the Holy Spirit. We honor you today. We thank you. Mm. Jesus, this is the day that you made, Lord. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for our church family. Thank you, Lord, that you haven't forgotten about us. For greater are you in us than he that is in the world. So we do pour out our praise. We lay at your feet today to hear what thus saith the Lord. You're our good God, Lord. You do good things. Mm. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you, Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and pray, seek my face, I'll heal the land. Thank you for your healing that's in this room today. Thank you, Lord, that we have a mind to serve you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in the quiet times and when th times are not quiet, we still have you on our mind. Thank you for the breath, Lord. Mm. Mm. We ask for the more of you, Lord. We ask for the more of you, more of your anointing more of you lord send forth the more oh god somebody's mind is wandering lord but we ask for the more hearts hearts are dismayed routines are breaking us down but we ask for the more anoint us the more oh god feed us the more more of your spirit mm. more, hallelujah more of your spirit god as we give you glory in your house we thank you for the more thank you that we're standing on holy ground we're standing in that place god that you want us to stand in we're following our purpose in the earth according to your will hallelujah god help us to be tender in your presence Help us to be tender in your presence. Help us to know that you're on our side and that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Before you take your seat, look at somebody and tell them you're blessed. <laughs> you're blessed. You're blessed because God says you're blessed. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning for being saved and for being sanctified, being filled with God's spirit. We thank the Lord for his goodness and his kindness towards each family today. You all, we've made it to another November. We made it. Hmm. That's something to thank God for. Yeah, I had a rough year in some areas and a good year in others hurt myself real bad ain't never been to no emergency room as an adult but god brought me through i'm 95 percent healed and you know what you can be healed too whatever happened to your body I, was, I watched my foot i watched it and god can heal you you hear what i'm saying to you whatever the situation he built it in us Mm, you may have a little scar afterwards, but God will heal you. Amen. Same thing with them difficult issues and that crazy stuff you went through when you was young. And some of y'all went through it when you was older. God can heal you. Amen. Hallelujah. I just hear that in the atmosphere healing when we come together corporately. The enemy doesn't like that.
Amen. But it's up to you, the spirit that you carry. Hear me now. The spirit that you carry, you have to hit the atmosphere because somebody's really going through. You may be sad because your puppy got lost and you had to put a sign on the pole saying, uh, please return little Spido to me and leave a number. But somebody is suffering with some terminal things in their family. Somebody didn't make it. I think somebody was saying that earlier. Somebody didn't make it this morning. Hallelujah. So let us be careful to switch off ourselves and turn on God when we come into the house of God. Amen. I'm delighted today for many reasons, but one, one reason is that we, uh, we're starting a new series for the next three Sundays. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to be talking about purpose. Amen. And how purpose overrides pain. Thank you, Jesus. And purpose overrides um, issues and things in life. Hmm. Uh, purpose... Mm, your purpose is set down in you before you come here, right? You know, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb and things like that. Purpose is also set down in chaotic circumstances. Yes. David says this, I was, uh, uh, was it shaped in iniquity or something to that effect? Mm -hmm. Purpose does not get a clear and smooth path mm. but it's set in you amen and so purpose has to deal with your color your culture your creed your ways your uh, idiosyncrasies your preferences your uh, likes and dislikes purpose has all that to deal with but yet purpose prevails so today, I want to lay the foundation for purpose. Hallelujah. I, I'm not getting into the detail because you can be a mama, a grandmama, a, 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 a worker at, at um, XYZ company, and also a, a, um, a wife. All those purposes, and a minister. And all of those things have a purpose. How do you deal with that? I'm going to work, I'm, 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 I'm taking care of the babies, I'm being the mother to my grandchildren. Which one do I do? I'm, I'm working in the church. How, where's my, per what one do I do? What's the, 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 is there one main thing? Amen. So many books have been written about purpose. Still we wondering, uh-huh. Because the books can't get you, give you, per only God. Hallelujah. God gave you your fingerprint, and God is the one that gives you purpose. Amen. Amen. So let's go into the scriptures now. Thank you, brother, and we'll go ahead and work with it. Um, let's go to John chapter 18. What scripture are we going to? John chapter 18. Um, purpose and gifts are not the same also. You can be gifted in the area and uh, that's not your primary purpose or your, really your purpose for doing what God wants you to do. Peter was a fisherman, wasn't he? And then the Lord comes along and says, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. He was fishing for fish. Yes, God blessed him in his fishing business, but his purpose was to change lives and to change souls. Some of you all are very talented on your job. But while you're on there, you need to change your life by living your life. You don't have to do a whole lot of, you know, spiritual stuff and speaking in tongues on the job and having HR come and talk to you. Say, well, we don't really do that here. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. We were, uh, First Lady and I were out for a walk. Because we ate, we was eating so much, right? So we went for a walk. We often go for walks. A lot. That's how I keep myself, you know, I'm older now. I have to, I used to want to walk and enjoy it one. I used to get out there and then add a little jog to it. I can't do that now. <laughs> I add a little jog to it. Something may not work right later on. But we out walking and all of a sudden I see her do this. 
That's how my eye saw it, right? She was really getting rid of a bug, but she did like that. And I was like, who, who you waving at? Because <laughs> wasn't nobody out there. Man, by the time we ended up talking about that, I laughed so hard. Because, you know, we waved with our dominant hand. She waved with her left hand, and I didn't see nothing. I didn't even see no squirrels out there. So I said, what you what? Because I had to check now. Have you slipped away? <laughs> Have you slipped away? What you waving at? And so we laughed about that. But listen, we have to live on purpose. Mm -hmm. I know Rick Warren wrote that book and all this purpose-driven church, purpose-driven. But after these three sessions with uh, dealing in the word, hopefully we'll recognize that a lot of your life is purpose. A lot of what you're doing, God has already snuck in there and got you directed in the path that he wants you to go on. It's so interesting now, um, when I travel, I, I used to get upset when something didn't go as I had written it down. Because, you know, we plan. We plan our outfits. We plan our uh, agenda. And for some of us that are very anal, we plan what we're going to do each day. And if it doesn't happen, then we'd like discombobulated. I have learned that I have a plan, but God has a plan. Hear me now. We're going to John. I'm going to read you the scripture. I have a plan, but God's plan overrides my plan. So now I finally got a little clue. Oh, I wanted to talk to so-and-so, but God switched it so that I would be in the car with this person. And this is what he wants for my life at this time. So let me just relax and go on with the flow. And say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say? Or what do you want me to hear? Amen, somebody. We have to be flexible in purpose. Because what you have in your head is, is, is and what I had in my head and have sometimes, is my culture. Do you not know, sometimes I get like, frustrated or angry and I don't know why but I lived in a house like that <laughs> hello somebody and I have to learn to turn it off and cry out to God God how do you want me to be how do you want me to live mm, thank you Lord John chapter 18 verse 33 this is one of the foundational scriptures John chapter 18 verse 33 and I'm, I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna give you three scriptures as foundation and then we'll go into uh, setting the platform for purpose today amen you all with me you all want to know something about your purpose amen uh, John 18 verse 33 please follow along I'm reading out of the New King James then Pilate entered <clears throat> The praetorium again. And he called for Jesus and said to him, Are you king of the Jews? Uh huh. You get the picture. The praetorium is a, a royal home or the governor's house. Amen. So imagine yourself being called to the governor's house to be questioned. Because some folks have some issues with you. And the governor says, who will be crucified and who won't? Mm. And Jesus answered and says, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Because right. Jesus never declared himself king of the Jews. Uh-uh. He's king of kings and lord of lords. Uh-huh. Pilate answered him because he got a little upset. With Jesus questioning him, he's the governor, and here you are a criminal, or they say you're a criminal, you t talking to me like that. Verse 35, and Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Mm. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my servants mm, would fight. So that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. I'm here to declare my kingdom. Verse 37. Pilate therefore 
said to him, are you then, are you a king then? Jesus answered, say, you rightly say. You say rightly that I am a king. And for this cause or purpose, I was born. And for this cause, I came into the earth that I should bear witness to the truth. And everyone who hears, who, who is of the truth, hears my voice. Amen. Jesus in these verses is uh, uh, declaring, if you will, to all authority hmm, who I am. Amen. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, wickedness and rulers and all these things in high places. So here now, Jesus is not talking to the people. He's not talking to his disciples. He's not talking to the Pharisees or the Sadducees. He's talking to the governmental bodies. Mm. When God brings you into high places, don't deny who you are. Tell them clearly who you are. You're a child of God. Mm. You're, you're living on purpose. You're living... According to Proverbs 19 and 21, which says many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. You don't have to put that up. You go, oh, you're okay. You're quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the media. Praise Amen. Jesus. There are many plans. Didn't we have plans when we were younger? And some of us still have plans. I have plans. I've learned to adjust. There are many plans. In a man's or woman's heart, you got things you want to do. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, uh, the King James says the Lord's purpose <clears throat> is that that will stand. And then Luke 4 and 43 says, but Jesus said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, because for this purpose I have come forth. So Jesus is now with uh, Pontius Pilate in the governor's courts and he's being asked questions like some of you are asked in a, a, a not the same way because you're not on, on death row but you're, you're, you're asked well wh what do you like what is your life about and I told you that purpose is set down in the midst of getting older Purpose is set down in the midst of you dating. Purpose is set down in the midst of you dealing with singleness or being married, being happy. Purpose is still there when all of your bills are paid and all of everything in life is going all right. I, I was troubled by my own behavior years and years ago. There was a mother in the church and uh, I can't remember her name. She's gone on to be with the Lord. She was at Kelly Lake Cathedral. <clears throat> and she asked me one day, she says, would you go to the prisons with me? And I said, well, I want you to preach over in the prisons when I go. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll go. Not knowing that she goes on holidays and special times when I'm with my family. And I was troubled by my behavior in that I, I would often leave on Thanksgiving Day. I would leave on 4th of July. It's years ago, for, but I did it for many years. And I would go down off Boulevard. You know Boulevard, when you, if you take it straight out, it runs into the federal penitentiary. Right. Now, I, I thought she was talking about jail, little thing on Memorial, where you know, you that, like uh, live time criminals. Just, you know, I'm gonna go in and preach, say something good, and then get on out. No, 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 no. And so in, in, in my life, I found myself doing things that I, Gary, don't really particular care to do. We'd go up into that prison, and the way you go in prison is, is you, you know you in, you're going, <laughs> you want to hold on, you want to keep yourself, because you have to go through metal and steel and concrete, and it don't smell nice in prison. So you go through one set of doors and they check you everywhere. They're checking you and touching you and you can't take nothing in. No, all of this got to come off and put in a closet, in a, in a cupboard or, uh, you know, where you can lock it up and then you come and then you go on through the doors. 
Uh huh. That's one thing, and that's scary enough. And you, it ain't like you can't see them. They see you, and you see them. What do you want to? So you go past a whole what they call cell block. That ain't where the chapel is. Then you go out on the yard where they exercise, the ones that's been behaving themselves. And then I thought, okay, I'm getting close. No, no, no. I go down another long corridor, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what I'm thinking? How am I going to get out if I have to break, break, go ghost on somebody? How, which way is out? So I'm memorizing, okay, I came through here, but then there's doors with keys and locks, and they lock in it when you come behind one, clang. <laughs> but purpose. God had a purpose because watch me now, watch me close. I go in and I'm doing, I did it for about, I think, eight or nine years. And I'm going in in times when I don't really want to go. And I get up and I preach as, as best to my ability, just like I preach here, to the best of my ability. I don't shortchange nothing. I don't talk about being set free. I got good enough sense to say, oh, the Lord will deliver you. Whom the Son has set free <laughs> is free. <laughs> you got to sign it, Pastor Son, you got to have some sense when you're preaching. You're looking at death row inmates and, and people that are uh, in there for life, and you're talking about, the Lord delivered me. Why should I be bound? Oh, uh, 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 uh. No, no, no. Don't sing that particular. There's a lot of songs in the list of songs. Amazing Grace would be a more appropriate song. And you don't talk about all that set free stuff. You preach the gospel of the kingdom. Hmm. And you have wisdom. But purpose drove me in there. Now, fast forward about uh, a few years. I'm driving up to Virginia to look at schools for Monica. Mm-hmm. And we go to uh, University of Virginia. We go to uh, uh, Washington, something Washington. It's a real prestigious school. And while I'm in the hotel, coming down for breakfast, somebody says, Pastor William, I don't know the guy from Adam. I just don't even recognize. He said, Pastor Williams, hey, Hey, I was in that federal penitentiary, but now I'm working here in the hotel as a busboy. Your purpose. Purpose will drive you into places that you is a little uncomfortable for you. But you got to figure it out. Now here Jesus is talking to Pilate and he's declaring things. And Pilate says, you're king of the Jews, aren't you? Say, hey, who told you that? Jesus did, Jesus, he didn't use his, all of his uh, authority, but he knew who he was. And you too need to know who you are. Amen. Your job is blessed to have you. Amen. Come on, talk to me, y'all. You know you, you, you partly the only sane one on the floor. Talk to me. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. I, I've, I've picked this thing and I prayed about it. Sometimes you're the only mentally sane. I know they functioning and you the junior and they're the, your supervisor and you got to follow this system that is not necessarily godly because it breaks up families and it does things to people like create ulcers in their stomach over nothing. Giving you migraines and different issues in your body for a system that doesn't mean nothing. Especially if you back office and you're not serving customers. It can be done tomorrow. Every accounting sheet can be adjusted. That's what they have what they call journal entry adjustments. Hallelujah. You, your thing can be adjusted. Whatever error you make. Trust me, I know. I used to do them. Hallelujah. But they make it such a big issue. But this guy said, hey, Pastor Williams, I was in prison and you came and preached. And he hugged me. And he said, thank you. Live on purpose. Live a holy and a godly life in the midst of where even preachers are telling you, you don't have to do it. Oh, you don't have to repent. You can just love the Lord and get back in line. No, you can't love the Lord and get back in line. Repent. 
tell God, I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for what I thought. I'm sorry. I, 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 Lord, I, I'm trying to live for you, but it, my flesh, yay. And then move on. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Purpose is something that all of us have in us. They define purpose as the reason why something is done or created. Mm. This pulpit or this podium is to hold your notes and to present something that's nice before the people. Mm. Its purpose is not to dance. Its purpose is not to uh, give sound. Its purpose is just to stand here. Mm. What is your purpose as a mother? The original design for a mother was to nurture that man and nurture them children. But World War II came along and said, no, we need y'all to work. That's how it happened. Mm. And then whoever came up with the birth control pill loosed women. Now I, I don't have to be with one. I can be with five. Not saying right or wrong. Because some of these young folks need some kind of protection so they don't have to run to the abortion clinics. Hello, somebody. Hmm. But purpose, God originally made that woman to nurture them. To, and that's why you're always falling back into it. You're always doing something for a baby. And can't no man nurture like you. I don't care what that silicone or what they inject in him and him throwing his wrist. Can't no man and can't no woman be no man. You can't, you can't have what I have. There's something in my psyche that's absolutely rough. Mm, hallelujah. But purpose. God created things for a certain purpose. Now, I said purpose is set down in a lot of issues, right? You got to work that out. If you got a, a, a situation where you have to work, take care of a child and be a mother, I mean, and be a wife, you got to figure out how to do all three purposes and still serve the Lord. Amen. Hey, and it ain't easy. Hallelujah. And purpose uh, creates meaning for us. Hallelujah. Purpose allows us to um, function in a way that pleases God and pleases us at the same time. You know, People or the world or Google, y'all like Google, right? Um, tells us the way that we discover our purpose is what are we passionate about? Well, I could be passionate about drinking. <laughs> I could like a, a, a good, strong uh, vodka with some, uh, what is this, uh, some Sprite and orange juice. I can just, just love it every Friday. I have it. It's right there. And I like two cubes of ice. I'm passionate about my drink. Hey, but my purpose. So it tells us that uh, uh, what type of people do you enjoy being around? That'll help you uh, 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 yeah, describe your purpose. Uh, no, purpose comes from the scriptures. Purpose comes from what God says your life is supposed to be. And everybody has one. Hallelujah. Mm. Well, then they say, where, where am I most influential? Where do I seem to uh, get my point across? That's my purpose. Ah, I don't know. I'm good at a lot of things. Uh-huh. In my life, I've been like a cereal aisle. Cocoa Pops, uh, Rice Krispies, uh, Captain Crunch. You remember Captain Crunch? You had to let it sit in the milk for a while because it was too rough on the top of your mouth. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You, you ain't had no, they don't make Captain Crunch in Perry, Georgia, so don't worry about it. Captain Crunch, you had to let it sit in the milk, uh, Michigan. Come on now. We had it up there and bowling. A lot of bowling in the winter. Yeah. Uh, you had Captain Crunch. Okay, but you had to let it sit in the milk. Thank you. And my life has been like that. And I, I, I would ask my, my um, uh, spiritual fathers, I was like, should I work or should I full-time pastor? Should I do this or should I do that? And it's always been uh, a, 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 a dichotomy, if you will. It's been an issue in my head until here lately, last five or six years. Every, <laughs> Jesus, this is a little off. 
Well, it's not really. Every disciple had a job. This thing about preachers not working is new. Jesus is known as a carpenter. So I was struggling for, for no reason. Every man, every pastor I had coming up all had a job. They all worked and they were all anointed and they preached to God. They got me saved, at least, hallelujah. Got me filled with the Holy Ghost. Elder Steen was a, he, he stayed at Bendix for 30 something years, but he preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Alfred had a funeral home and worked at the bank and church. Built two churches, beautiful church, but they worked. So this concept that I had in my head, oh, I have to go full time. That's not accurate according to scripture and according to how Jesus lived. Amen, somebody. When the time comes and you are full, there is a day. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When full time comes. God makes that day come where every need is supplied. Now, I'm very, actually, I'm there. I don't have to work. I don't have, but, oh, it blesses me. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. And it keeps me from having to ask for two offers to take care of this place. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, we, we, some of us, we can say we don't have to work right now. Hallelujah. Oh, we done made it a little bit further in our life for which we give God praise. If you ain't got to clock no clock or check no box or do it, you are blessed. And if you're close to that, you're blessed. And you can still walk around like mother, you are blessed. I'm telling you, you're blessed. Hallelujah. You are blessed. When you ain't got to go out in the field and find no peas and butter beans. You can go to the grocery store and buy your own. Hallelujah. You're blessed and favored of God. Let me move on now. Hallelujah. I got a few things about this purpose. Number one, everybody has a purpose. Whether you are close and discovered yours or not, there's every, this is my, I think I'm bumping it when I do certain moves. Everybody has a purpose. Somebody say, I have a purpose. Hmm. And most of us have multiple ones, but there's a, there's a, the, the, the spirit of God has given us a thing within all of those that he wants us to do. My purpose is to be a father. Mm, I know that. I know it. Mm. And my purpose is also to teach. Mm. My purpose is to take care of my wife. Mm. My purpose is to pastor. And, and for whatever reason, God told me to love you all. Mm. He, I'm, and I don't mean this uh, uh, mouth love. I mean that if you uh, have to go to jail, I'm going to put the bail up for you. That was a joke. And <laughs> it is true. We would, we would get the bail as long as it's not over a certain amount. Now, if you, <laughs> if you do a whole lot of big things and it's you, uh, we're going to go on our knees and pray for a miracle. But if it's just five hundred dollars, you out that night. I got it. Yeah, five thousand. I got you. I'm you coming out. Come on. I got the bail church. The pastor can't. No, 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 no. Now we got to think. If it's fifty thousand, we got to think about it. We got to pray on it and sacrifice and put some oil on our head and really moan. But a little bit, I got you. I, I you. <laughs> God told me to love you. And I take my commands seriously. But everybody, the second thing I want to know uh, is fulfilling purpose matters. It matters to people that you're around, that, that are watching your life. It matters to God, and it matters to you. When you fulfill purpose, you, you're, you're, you're more full. You, 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 you ever seen a satisfied spouse or a satisfied person that's been around you? You feel full because they're full. You feel happy. So purpose is good and, and fulfilling purpose is important for people, for God, and for you. Let me say this to you that are believers. Purpose is not far off for you. 
The Holy Spirit, whether he's announced it or not, has got you on a path. You know how the scripture says the uh, orders of a good man are set by the Lord. He doesn't announce. Now I'm going to put you on this path. Now at, at age this, you're going to meet the right person. Now at age this, you're going to get this opportunity or I'm going to. He just does it. A lot of times we want the fame of stuff, but God just does it. Amen. So purpose is not far. the third point I want to declare to you is your purpose is not far off from what you're already in. God has a way of using every purpose person and you could be just a, 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 a grandmother that's sowing seed into one of your grandchildren. And that's what he designed you for. He lets you go through tough things over here, uh, hurts over here, a little success here. And now you're seasoned enough to pour life into that grandchild with the Holy Ghost. So your earlier days were just formation. And now you're ready because you know God. You know that your own ways are not the ways that to go, but to trust in the Lord to help you so. And this is another thing. I'm going to say it, and y'all can get mad at you if you want. You may have messed up with every child you had, but your grands, you get it right. You may have jacked up, you may have jacked up the child, but with these grands, you can say, no, I did that, and it didn't come out so right. I really missed this one. This one has emotional tics because I said to him, I whacked them when I should have hugged them. Now, but this one, hey, come here, baby. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Just hold a head on your, on your uh, thigh. And that, that thing, I don't know how we know, but we know. We messed up enough to know how to do uh, children now. Praise the Lord. Hmm. God's responsibility to us is to bring us into purpose. That's number four. That's, he, he reconciles us. He reconciles us. He reconciles us. And then he starts nurturing and, and nudging us towards purpose. I never in a million years thought that I would uh, go into another country and preach the gospel. That wasn't a desire. It wasn't a, a need. It wasn't a thought. It wasn't a, a hope. But I find myself now, if I don't go, I don't live. And I don't mean eat and walk around doing things. I say, if I don't go, I don't live. There's something in me that's only fulfilled if I get out every now and then. I don't neglect my family. I don't neglect my responsibilities in, in here, but it's, a, it's something there that if I don't do it, I'm going to die. I'm going to dry up spiritually. And you have to recognize after a while what God has called you to do. Listen, purpose of individuals saved or unsaved are synchronized by God to bring forth his plans and purposes. Right. Morris and I have known each other for a long time. In a million years, I never thought I would have a church and he would be the, uh, the minister of music. Right. Melissa and I, known each other for a long time. We All our families used to get together and eat and do barbecues and all this stuff. But never in a million years did I imagine that his life path and my life path will be to build a church. When Elizabeth was told by her husband, you're going to have a baby, and she was barren and old, it was synchronized. He was doing his priestly duties, wasn't he? In Luke chapter 1, he was doing his priestly duties, which he always did, and then an angel showed up in the, in the, in the temple, in the holies of holies, and back there when he was doing all this stuff, and he shot them. He come out of there mute, where he couldn't talk. You know, he couldn't talk no more because he wasn't with the program, the purpose of God. And so Zechariah came home and told Elizabeth, Elizabeth, you're going to have a, a, a baby and his name going to be John. He had to write it, but he told her. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then the Bible says that about, uh, what, six months after that, Mary gets pregnant. Her relative, she's a relative of Elizabeth, synchronized purpose. So... When, when the angel comes and talks to Mary 
And Mary finally agrees that this is the purpose of God for my life. And now I can't do it on my own, but the Holy Spirit would do it. She went and visited Elizabeth. Mm. And the Bible says that the baby jumped up, didn't it? It says it leaped in her womb. And it says Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Synchrony. So what I'm saying to you now, I'm, I, I was called to open the church and to pastor it for a season. And then God called you also to be a pillar because everyone in here now are pillars. What God is doing, I'm not quite sure. Do I get another billboard? If I get a billboard, y'all better watch out because then you got to watch your purse. Oh, I wish we had more people. I wish uh, 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 one of our brothers recorded a big meeting we had. His camcorder got, got jacked. Oh, I wish I, I wish the church was full. Then you're going to have to hug your purse, mama. And then I have to take on a different, we have to have deacons stand at the door. Because nowadays things ain't what they look like. I came to church because my friend came to church. And I, and I ain't no, I'm high actually. And I saw your purse, your, your, I, I was walking by during the offering and I saw that you left your purse unzipped and I see your handbag in there. So I'm going to wait till you not watching. Yeah, y'all, 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 you, you, you want what you want, but I'm, I'm, I'm resting in God right now. Amen. I'm waiting for God to do it because I know what, and uh, we had a, uh, we used to, hey, I'm, I'm still on purpose, y'all. I'm just telling you this. We used to collect a lot of money, sometimes $10,000. I've had people come to the church and drop money in, the, and so sometimes it's some cash. So we used to count money in the back, and there was a boy I can't remember who it was, and I'm not joining on it, but every time we church, uh, we count, he won't change. He won't change for a 50 or a 20. It wasn't never a, 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 a Benz or Benjamin. It was 50 or 20. <laughs> uh, and I was like, uh. now the ghetto in me rose. You won't need change every Sunday. And I'm thinking, uh, he, 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 he's, he's, he's measuring. He's checking and he's watching. So all these things come with a big church, y'all. I was visiting West Angeles Church of God in Christ where Bishop Blake uh, membership is 21,000. And I drove up, I used to audit for Coca-Cola and every, every time I go to a city and have to stay there on Wednesday nights, I would go to church. And I would want, I, I've been to Paul Morton's church in New Orleans, all these big churches. I wanted to see how they operated just in case I needed to pick up and glean some things. So I'm at the parking lot. <laughs> of the church and I see this guy hitting a pipe hello some of y'all don't even know what that looks like thank you Jesus for your peaceful home and you but I know what it looks like and he's hitting it and hitting it and then he finally puts it down and then he goes in church every church type of church comes with something and our purpose would have to change a bit to not just enjoying and being pillars but be watchful and prayerful until everybody comes into the obedience of the faith. Have a few more. Purpose, preference, and gifts precede birth. When we look at Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. Hmm, I said purpose, preference, and gifts precede birth. In Jeremiah 1 and 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I, say, I sanctified thee. That's verse 5. I ordered thee, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Uh-huh. And Jeremiah had a retort. And he says, Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. I'm just a little one. I'm just a baby. I'm not, I'm not, my words are not articulate yet. Verse 7. Then I shall send thee. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 says, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee saith the Lord. Purpose, what God puts you in to become, 
uh, is put there before you ever, uh, uh, before you ever are uh, formed in your culture. American culture is money, capitalism, uh, working the system, no matter what it does to you. You can work and make millions of dollars and then you can't, can't uh, uh, spend it because you have to take blood pressure medicine that messes up your, your kidney. <laughs> because of a sister, you never looked into the word to what you should be or how you should be. The Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. Mm. And then that same Zechariah, that same story with Elizabeth and Zechariah, it talks about what John shall be, the boy, before he's, he's ever uh, born or ever come into the earth. It says in verse 11 of chapter 1 in Luke, it says, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, that's Luke chapter 1, verse 13. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayers is heard. And Elizabeth shall bear a son, mm, and thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. That's number one. He shall drink no wine or no strong drinks. That's number two. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Number three, even from his mother's womb. So when, when Mary came in and the baby leaped and he, the Bible says, the Bible says in that particular text, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. But here it says that John was also filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of you all were filled with the Holy Ghost before you got here. That's why you were nice. That's why you love people. That's why you, you, you're able to do the things that you're doing. Mm. It's because mama taught me how to be nice. Some of you all have, a, have the spirit of niceness. You received it before you even got here. Hallelujah. We're talking about purpose. Pur and then it says in verse uh, 15, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Mm, great. Hallelujah. And many of the children of Israel, verse 16, shall he turn uh, to God. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord, their God. We wanted to lay today a foundation of purpose such that you know uh, that purpose is personal. You and God have to work out what you do as a mother, as a minister, as a family person, as an adult in your situation. You uh, have something that God has placed in your life to fulfill. And through the, what I would call almost spiritual trial and error, you got to work that thing out. You got to listen to what the Holy Ghost is telling you. You've got to listen to what I'm saying today, that your purpose will be fulfilled. Many times they say, uh, uh, it's not where you start, but where you finish. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's not where you start. It's what God has spoken over your life. Why God makes it a discovery for you, I don't know. I don't know why your purpose doesn't come with written instructions. And I don't know why uh, some people say, well, it's all in the Bible. It's not all in the Bible. God has to speak to you. God has to talk to you. God has to have communion with you. God has to let you know, I want you to go left, even though you want to go right. There has to be something that's spoken and some kind of dream or vision that you have. Hello, somebody. God has to minister like he's ministering now and let you know that, yes, I'm, I'm with you, baby. Yes, I love you, but you got to do this. Did not Jesus say, hey, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. I wish that I didn't have to drink this cup, but nevertheless, not thy will. Purpose is not prosperity. Hello, somebody. Let me tell you this right now. 
Christ, being a believer in Jesus Christ does not guarantee you prosperity in the way that this culture has taught you. Prosperity is when you can digest what you eat. Prosperity is when your hand is in the hand of the Lord. Prosperity is when you say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. It's not my ways, Lord, that I want to please myself, but I want to please you. I want to do it your way in your time and how you want me to be. God, if you just make me all over again. Hallelujah. This is purpose. Thank you, Lord. Jesus now is with Pontius Pilate and he knows what he's got to face. He knows there's a rugged cross with his name written on it. And he knows that he could call for legions of angels and they would come free him. But he says, no, I'm going to go on to the cross. I'm going to go on while you're playing softly. I'm going to go on to the cross because Julie needs me. I'm going to go on to the cross because Sonia is going to need some hope. When pregnancy is difficult, she's going to need some hope. I'm going to go on to the cross because that big eyed boy that's born at 624 South Clinton, South Bend, Indiana, he's going to need some help. His brothers can't help him. They drink too much. Oh, yes, Lord. His mama been going through. She'll take him, but he's going to need some help. Mm, I'm going to go on to the cross. Because uh, Carol going to need some strength when she's taking care of her mama. I'm going to go on to the cross because Maxine will get a little weary if I don't go. I'm going to go on to the cross. So when Janine is in ICU and she needs a deliverer, all power. I'm going to go on to the cross because there's a lady in South Africa that's going through, but her kinsman redeemer is miles and miles away. I'll put in her spirit to travel. And then at the set time, I'll show her her Boaz. I'm going to go on to the cross. Because my son. <laughs> is going to lose something precious. And he's going to need me. I'm going to go on to the cross. Because Melissa going to be going through some things. But she going to need me. I'm going to go on down here to the cross. And I'm going to die. For the sins of the world. But it pleases my father to bruise me. I'm living on purpose. I'm going down here. I'm going to take this pain. So that the abundant life that I speak about. Everybody can have if they want it. I'm going on down here to the cross. I'm not going to stay in Pontius Pilate's house. Jesus died for us, saints, that we might have the liberty of life. We got to walk in it. You ain't got to die like that. I ain't got to die like that. Hallelujah. I can live. Thank you, Jesus. I can live a good life, a long life, a full life. I can live a life full of hope. Because I know my Redeemer lives. I know who anoints my head with oil. I know who makes my cup overrun. I know in whom I put my trust. I know he'll come through for me. Hallelujah. Everybody's standing. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, purpose will prevail. Purpose will prevail. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody say, purpose will prevail. I'm living on purpose. Mm, I'm living on pur purpose. Yes, Lord. Sing just a little bit of this and we'll be ready to uh, receive the morning offering with this breath, the breath that I have. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out your praise and pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise for it's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise and pour it's your breath, it's your breath.
It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our So we pour out, pour out our praise and pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out, pour out our praise to you, only Lord. Bow your heads with me. Bow your heads. Lord God, we thank you. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for breathing on us again, Lord. Thank you for the breath in our lungs that gives you praise. Thank you, Lord, that we're living on purpose. As Jesus says, not my will, but thy will, Lord, we also say. <laughs> Lord, you brought us to this point. You've been with us all our life. And we say, yes, God. We will obey. We will do it according to the scriptures and according to what you have put in our life. We'll stand in the midst of darkness. We'll win by righteousness. We'll speak the truth in season, out of season. We'll tell a dying world that God loves them. God is here to help, to redeem, to save. Hallelujah. So we say, yes, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Lord, with the fruit of our mouth. We bless you with our soul, with our hearts, with our mind and our spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you touch in this house today. We pray that you touch in every apartment, every home, every condominium. Oh, God, touch those that are listening. Thank you, Jesus. Touch, Lord God. Those that couldn't come out today, Lord, we pray. Those that are connected in different states and different cities. Mm, thank you, Jesus. We lift our hands to you, Lord. Mm, great are you, Lord. Great is your name. Great is your holiness. Great is the things that you're doing for us today. Mm, bless your name, Jesus. God, we speak more faith. We speak more life. Life in the spirit. We speak holiness. Mm. We speak that every blinded eye would be open today. Every ear that's been stopped up. We speak, Lord, a clarity of hearing. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to us, O oh God. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Speak to your, through your words. Speak through your, your dreams. Speak through your... Speak, Lord. Every burden be broken now. Every heavy load be lightened right now. Mm, in the name of Jesus, we declare peace. Peace in your spirit. Peace in your heart. Peace in your mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Gee, God. Yes, God. Yes. You began us with prayer. And you're completing it with prayer. Somebody's receiving their miracle, Lord. Somebody came in heavy, but they're leaving a little bit lighter. Somebody on the call today, Lord, needs a special touch. They're feeling a little left out, but right now, God, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, is coming to them to move upon their life. God, somebody's suffering with some uh, stiffness in their legs, in their body. But we declare today, those that are connected by the Zoom call, Whatever the thing is that you need from God is coming right now. We declare that nothing can stop God. No weapon formed against you or any of us in this building can be stopped because the Lord is with us. Jesus prevails. Jesus prevails. Jesus heals every hurt. Jesus mends every wound in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
I'm praying for family members. I'm praying for husbands and wives. I'm praying for your sisters and your cousins, your nieces and your nephews. I'm praying for your co-workers in the name of Jesus that they might be touched like you. I'm praying that you are the instrument that helps people live a better life. And we give you glory, Lord, for it. We give you thanks, God. Use me, Lord. Hallelujah. Use me for your glory. Oh, oh hallelujah. Use me for your glory. Hey, God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. I'm going to be used by the Almighty God. I'm going to be used to bless my family. Hey, oh, hallelujah. I'm going to be used to heal my loved ones. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak joy. I'm going to speak health in the name of Jesus. And I say, yes, Lord. When my family is down, I'm going to lift them up. Yes. My words, my testimony, my speaking, my laying on a yes. hand, yes. going to lift them up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's not over because I haven't spoken yet. I'm yes. going to back to somebody, my daughter, my son. Yes. I'm going to speak life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Give God the best hand clap you can give him.